2015, Maltese flagged supertanker MT Calamos was attacked by Nigerian pirates while anchored in territorial waters near an oil terminal off the coast of Nigeria. During the attack, one of the Calamos' officers was shot and killed. Three other crew members were kidnapped and taken inland where they were held for ransom for three weeks. The Calamos incident was one of 54 total piracy incidents that occurred in the Gulf of Guinea in 2015. Its 25 crew members represent a small fraction of the 1,225 total seafarers subjected to incidents of piracy throughout the year. To date, not a single perpetrator has been prosecuted for these crimes. Despite recent efforts by coastal states in the Gulf of Guinea to increase their naval capacity, resulting in a few high-profile arrests, they have failed to establish effective systems for prosecution. As in the case of the MT Calamos, this allows criminals to go free even after incidents of extreme violence. This lack of legal follow-through allows pirates in the region to act with impunity and limits incentive for industry to report incidents that occur. According to the International Maritime Bureau, up to 70% of piracy incidents in the Gulf of Guinea go unreported. Even with the limited progress that has been made toward combating piracy in the region, there is still no justice for the seafarers who have fallen victim to pirates. Without effective legal mechanisms to bring maritime criminals to trial, piracy will continue to fester in West Africa. We've got a couple of skiffs ahead, dead ahead. Another American flagged ship has been attacked by Somali pirates. The ship's owner More trouble on the open sea. Somali pirates hijacked another vessel last Overpowered Sunday. by armed pirates, Salim surrendered. Somalia's pirates are well armed and determined. He and his crew spent the next 20 months living in difficult Four other ships were hijacked Tuesday, 60 hostages taken in all. In a single year, when piracy was at its height in 2010, over 4,000 seafarers were attacked and more than 1,000 were held hostage. The Somali piracy business model of hijacking vessels and holding crews for ransom has disrupted shipping patterns, cost billions of dollars in mitigation efforts, and taken a severe toll on seafarers. But as piracy waned over the past few years, the international community's commitments to combat piracy have begun to diminish. A series of attacks on regional DAOs in 2015 may serve as an indication that we could be resetting the stage for piracy's return. Looking back as piracy escalated between 2007 and 2009, shipping adapted by shifting transits away from the Somali coast. By 2009, the traditional shipping lane along the East African coast through the Mozambique Channel had disappeared. This continued for the next several years, but as piracy declined due to efforts from the international community, ships began to shift back towards the coastline. By 2015, the traditional pre-piracy route was back in use along the coast of East Africa. In addition, the rate of vessels using private security and other measures dropped significantly throughout the course of the year. This decline was most pronounced in the fourth quarter when the size of the high-risk area was reduced. The deployment of naval vessels dedicated to counter-piracy operations decreased as well. However, in 2015, at least nine merchant vessels, five DAOs, and one fishing vessel reported being approached or attacked by Somali pirates. The five DAOs were all successfully hijacked by pirates. 
In November, it was reported that the MV Muhammadi had been hijacked, and a nearby FV Muk Andaman 028 was reportedly attacked as well. These attacks occurred well within the newly re-established shipping lane. While several regional Somali coast guards possess a minimal operative capacity, they are unable to patrol the Somali EEZ or mount an effective response to an attack outside their operational range. The international community's efforts to combat piracy have diminished, and recently there have been successful attacks on DAOs. These may serve as vital early warning signs that the stage is being reset for Somali piracy to return. In 2016, the Western Indian Ocean continued to see limited piracy activity, largely due to at-sea mitigation efforts over the last several years by international naval forces, adherence to industry best management practices, and the use of private security. While incidents of piracy have been reduced, so has the international community's commitment to a sustained effort to ensure that piracy does not re-emerge. In 2011, Oceans Beyond Piracy estimated the cost of combating Somali piracy at over $6 billion. By 2016, that estimate dropped to less than $2 billion. This drop in spending is attributed to reductions in international mitigation efforts, like the presence of navies, the employment of armed guards, and other security measures on board vessels. While spending toward international efforts continues to drop, very little funding has shifted toward building the capacity of regional maritime forces. Despite their limitations, regional maritime security entities have had some success in responding to piracy incidents. In March of 2017, while transiting from Djibouti to Mogadishu, the MT Iris 13 was hijacked 18 nautical miles off the northern tip of Somalia. This was the first successful hijacking of a merchant vessel in the region in five years. Piracy has returned to the high seas off the coast of Somalia. The ship had sent a distress call on Monday. Later, the Somali pirates demanded a ransom for the release of the vessel and the crew. However, the crew was released just two days later when the Puntland Maritime Police Force intervened. While the PMPF's response to the Iris 13 incident shows the importance of building regional maritime security capacity, several other attacks in early 2017 highlight the many gaps that still remain. A maritime piracy deterrence threshold must be identified and upheld in order to maintain stability in the region. If international efforts are further reduced before more robust regional security mechanisms are in place, piracy and other maritime crimes will continue unabated.